Joining us now is Democratic Congressman Lloyd Doggett of Texas. He is a member of the House Ways and Means Committee. Thank you very much for joining us on this important night. I think it's a night that you and I always knew was coming because we've read that law and we know how simple it is and how it, it had to be enforced. Uh, can you tell us in the meeting today, were there any Republican votes in favor of releasing the Trump tax returns? No, unfortunately, there were not, Lawrence. Uh, as you know, before the lawsuit was ever filed, on Valentine's Day back in 2017, I made the first motion to release these tax returns that was blocked by Republicans for two years, and they're still covering up for Donald Trump. It was a professional meeting, but they're the same arguments that they've been making all along that I think have no merit. All we know now is that Donald Trump is a guy with big credits, Big deductions, big losses, but seldom a big tax bill. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, what we are going to see when we're able to take a look at the details of these tax returns? Well, as you pointed out, you won't see as much as you would with a normal auditing process because the success of our uh, investigation and the work that Chairman Neal did is that we now know the Trump IRS failed to hold him accountable. Uh, and so there are no working papers here. There was a, it was a narrow inquiry where uh, the Ways and Means staff and the Joint Tax Committee staff were unable to talk with anyone at the IRS. What we do have, and you're very familiar with the Joint Tax Committee, they've identified about 10 areas that need to be further explored that should have been explored in an audit. But uh, the Trump IRS didn't have much interest in audits uh, and didn't act until Chairman Neal's letter went out. Uh, to clarify for the audience, there's a, a separate group of tax professionals in the Congress called the Joint Committee on Taxation. Uh, they serve mostly as technical experts to the Senate Finance Committee, the Tax Writing Committee in the Senate, the House Ways and Means Committee, the Tax Writing Committee in the House. Uh, and the, the Joint Tax Committee staff, we at the Senate Finance Committee staff, always regarded as uh, the, the kind of higher level of the game, uh, e even wiser and capable of more expertise looking at these things than normal committee staff are. And the committee staff are the best that there is. There's just a, an even higher level than that. Uh, what, what have you found in the Joint uh, Tax Committee's specific analysis of these tax returns? Well, they've uh, had to do an analysis in a very short period of time, basically since Thanksgiving. Uh, and they uh, identified a, about 10 areas that need further exploration. Overall, unlike most taxpayers who would go in in an audit, there's no substantiation here for much of anything. The IRS said they'd accept uh, essentially Trump's word or that of his uh, uh, accounting firm. Uh, and I, I found most troubling the fact that uh, in 20, 2015, he still was uh, relying on a, a tax loss carry forward of about $105, $107 million. Uh, that, along with other deductions and credits that he claimed, meant that in a number of years he paid nothing in taxes. And as you know, one year, $750. Uh, there is less information about foreign entanglements here because this was a narrow inquiry and of the some 500 Trump tax entities, uh, the committee only got information about eight of them. It was limited to six years even though this issue of a huge loss carryover was from an earlier year that was not investigated. So I think we know that uh, a lot about Trump and about uh, the operations of the IRS and its failings, but there's still more that uh, ought to be learned about this, and I hope that the Senate will continue uh, the work that we've done since Republicans have made it clear not only do they want to keep uh, a cover-up of Trump's tax returns, but they want to ensure that nothing on this issue happens beginning January 3rd. Let's listen to what uh, Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett had to say tonight, a uh, member of the Ways sure. and Means Committee. Uh, she was initially reluctant uh, and opposed, as she said, to making the tax returns public. Let's listen to why she changed her mind about that. I, for one, as uh, some of my colleagues have been bemused about, was not initially in favor of releasing the president's tax returns. As uh, a prosecutor, a former prosecutor, as a lawyer, I had great reserve with the notion of doing that. However, 
And seeing the report, seeing the dysfunction within the mandatory audit process, as well as seeing the things that should have been looked at, the things that were pointed out by the outstanding Joint Committee on Taxation uh, from the tax staff as well, that can only be understood with the release of the underlying evidence as well. Uh, Congressman Doggett, uh, the, what is the point of making the tax returns public? Well, I think uh, she gave a great explanation of it, but basically to understand the failings of the IRS and the need for this new federal legislation, you need to see not just a summary that some people might believe or not believe, but the actual returns to see how many deductions and credits and losses were claimed, tens of millions of dollars without adequate substantiation and without adequate investigation or auditing by the IRS. The tax returns really make the case. But as we look at the tax returns as evidence of the need for new auditing legislation to apply not just to Republicans or one president, but to all of our future presidents, we also need to note a certain lack of fairness in our tax system that clearly favors the wealthy like Donald Trump. Uh, those people, for example, who are getting audited on an earned income tax credit or a child tax credit at a much higher rate, and yet the IRS can't audit someone like Donald Trump in a timely and thorough way. Well, the point was made tonight uh, in the Chairman Neal's uh, press conference that uh, that people on the earned income tax credit, which is to say the uh, lowest income tax filers that we have, are five times more likely to be subject to an audit than the highest earning taxpayers uh, that we have. Uh, another point made was that the IRS under Donald Trump and after uh, Republican defunding of the IRS uh, year in and year out, did not have the personnel who were actually capable of auditing in a highly professional way tax returns as complex as Donald Trump's. Well, that's right. And if they didn't do it for Donald Trump, you can be sure that there are a lot of ultra wealthy people in this country who are not getting audited and are not paying their fair share of taxes. So it's not only the many loopholes that exist that need to be closed in our tax laws, much work that the Congress should be doing but won't next year, but it's the way this is implemented and whether the Internal Revenue Service is really doing the job. Certainly it wasn't under Trump, but we need it to enforce our laws and to treat everyone fairly. Do we have any evidence uh, that Donald Trump was being audited in 2015 and 2016 when he said he was uh, while running for president and that was his excuse for not releasing his tax returns? There is an allusion to that in the report uh, from Joint Tax uh, that makes me think that he was, but uh, there, that was not an issue that was explored uh, because the committee limited its inquiry to a very narrow set of years and, as I said, didn't even go back and explore where this uh, 105 or $7 million loss carryover came from. That's some of the work that really needs to be done going forward. Congressman Lloyd Doggett, thank you very much for joining us on this important night. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Lawrence. Best for the holidays. Thank you. You too. Thank you.